Hello there. Were you supposed to be on a plane in April 2010? Chances are, if you were, it didn't take off. Because 10 years ago, air travel came to a total standstill. Seems familiar. We saw the largest shutdown of air travel since World War II. Until now. Is it till now? Does now count? You know what I mean. You know what I'm referring to. And it was all caused by a volcano whose name no one can pronounce. Well, I, lots of people can, um, but I'm not one of them. And apparently the people at the BBC couldn't pronounce it either because they referred to it exclusively as the Icelandic ash cloud. So once again, that raises the very obvious question of would project management fundamentals have affected the outcome of the Icelandic ash cloud? Or the Icelandic ash cloud. So what happened? A volcano happened, erupted, a volcano happened. And from the 14th to the 20th of April, ash covered large areas of Northern Europe. As there were concerns that the ash cloud would damage aircraft engines, a lot of countries closed their airspace. Tens of thousands of flights were canceled and millions of passengers were left stranded. For some, this led to a, an extended holiday, which is not the worst thing in the world. Others were less excited. John Cleese reportedly spent £30,000 or 3,000 Norwegian kroner on a taxi journey from Oslo to Brussels because he missed his flight from Norway. Unfortunately, the volcano also affected the economy, entertainment, politics and sporting activities. Sounds oddly familiar. Just imagine this, TUI travel lost between 5 and 6 million per day during the airspace closure because customers were unable to return home. So, how do we deal with risks such as an erupting volcano? It's a big risk. Well, it's a small, is it a big risk or small risk? Because it's, it's big, but it seems unlikely. Regardless of that, the answer is MOR, or Management of Risks, which provides a framework for risk management. So it's ideal for something like this, which is a major natural event that affects millions of people. This all seems so familiar. MOR uses eight principles, which together ensure effective risk management. Let's look at these principles and how the national authorities who were responsible for closing the airspace in 2010 could have applied them effectively. Number one, align with objectives. Risk management needs to continually align with the objectives of an organization. Suitable risks need to be identified and appropriate priority needs to be applied to those individual risks with overall risks being associated with that. So one of the objectives of the UK Civil Aviation Authority, for example, is safety. Not entirely unexpected. So naturally, things like an erupting volcano, which could cause damage to both the passengers and the aircraft, needs to be part of their response planning. And in this incident, closing the airspace over the UK and Europe was the responsible thing to do. Number two, fits the context. Risk management is designed to fit the current context. This means understanding the external context for an organization's performance, such as sector, technology, regulatory regimes, as well as context for the internal performance, which takes more into account culture, structure, relationships. You also need to be aware of things like organizational strategy when you're doing a risk assessment. Looking at the context for the relevant authorities, it's easy to say that this was an exploding volcano. And so naturally their risk management had to be uh, adjusted or adapted. Although you can be sure that an erupting volcano has always been on the established risk list of an airline because they've always been a known threat. In 1982, for example, a BA crew flew through, flew through, BA crew th flew through, BA crew flew through. In 1982, for example, a BA crew flew into an ash cloud, which led to the failure of the plane's engines. The pilots managed to restart them, mid-air. The eruption of the volcano, which caused a giant ash cloud in Europe, I, uh, fly, uh, was regarded as severe because it was directly underneath the jet stream. And the ash cloud was basically injected into the jet stream, which heavily affected the European airspace. In addition to that, the cloud wasn't just made up of normal ash. It was highly abrasive, glass-rich ash, which could have massively affected an airplane. Glass-rich ash. Sounds horrible. So naturally, the response to close the airspace fit the context. Number three, engages stakeholders. Risk management engages stakeholders and deals with differing perceptions of risk. To engage your stakeholders, you need to communicate effectively so that both they know what's going on and why you're doing what you're doing. So when looking at the relevant national authorities, their stakeholders were numerous. Their main stakeholders were airlines, airports and passengers. And safety was obviously given more priority than economic considerations. Yet, looking back, communication probably wasn't perfect. Well, it never is, but in this case it was it's less perfect than normal 
not perfect. There were airlines that complained about the airspace closure because they were losing so much money and they didn't think it was necessary to close the airspace. Again, it feels so familiar for some reason. But the response from the EU Transport Presidency was clear. The situation is causing important losses, but safety is paramount. In addition to that, not every stranded passenger knew why they weren't able to travel. There was glass in the air, glass rich ash, which I hadn't heard of before this. So communication with the stakeholders here could potentially have been improved upon. Number four, provides clear guidance. Risk management provides clear and coherent guidance to stakeholders. So the clarity here was a very clear and concise announcement about the closure of airspace. A coherent approach was also necessary for everyone in authority to speak with one voice. It would have been really confusing if Germany was saying no flights at all, whereas BA was saying we're still flying. Number five, informs decision making. Risk management is linked to and informs decision making across the organisation. Decisions are often being made when some factors are still uncertain. So it's important to ensure that those making the decisions are fully aware of both threats and opportunities. Only if they have all of the available information are they able to make informed decisions. The risk tolerances are also very important here. So for the European authorities to close the airspace, they had to understand the potential risks of the ash cloud and the threat that that posed to airlines and customers. Because if an airplane goes down, then the customers are This is something you record in a risk log, for example. Now closing the airspace wasn't a we're all freaking out type decision. The London Volcanic Ash Advisory Centre, or VAC, took care of informing the relevant civil aviation authorities about the ash cloud. And that is what eventually led to the decision to close all the airspace. Number six, facilitates continual improvement. Risk management uses historical data and facilitates learning and continual improvement. What can we learn from history about volcanic eruptions? Looking at the past, well, there's Pompeii, and then there was a the famous year without a summer in 1816. It was basically a, a volcanic winter that led to food shortages and lots of other nasty stuff. And that was the result of a volcanic explosion in what is now Indonesia. So what can we learn from that? Volcanoes can be dangerous. But what could the relevant authorities do for future events? One of the biggest problems was getting passengers back in the air after over 95,000 flights had been cancelled in Europe. The issue was that airlines didn't give those passengers priority when the airspace reopened. The Court of Justice of the European Union announced in 2013 that an air carrier must provide care to passengers whose flights have been cancelled due to extraordinary circumstances such as the closure of airspace following the eruption of a volcano. So from a passenger's point of view, there have been improvements. In 2012, there was another eruption of an Icelandic volcano. This time, the EU activated a new crisis team which brought together experts from the European Commission, the European air traffic controllers, the aviation industry and airports. They were responsible for coordinating the response to this new eruption. So that was definitely an improvement as well. Number seven, creates a supportive culture. Risk management creates a culture that recognizes uncertainty and supports considered risk taking. Managing risks appropriately means taking calculated chances that add to the value of the business. It might sound great, but zero risk isn't possible. And this is where supportive culture is definitely needed because it embeds risk management into the ordinary activities of an organization, which is sometimes referred to as issue avoidance. Now it looks like the different European countries are all very supportive of each other and there was some joint decision making going on. However, we don't know what went on behind closed doors. It was almost definitely chaos. After the ash cloud, EU ministers agreed to accelerate the integration of national air traffic control systems into the single European sky, which was the initiative to reform the European air traffic management system. Number eight, achieves measurable value. Risk management enables achievement of measurable organizational value. Well, there were no fatalities reported as a result of the eruption, which is positive, generally. However, there were a lot of industries and sectors that suffered major financial losses as a result of the airspace closure. The International Air Transport Association, or IATA, all about the acronyms today, reported losses for the airline industry of over 1.7 billion US dollars. So it's a lot of money. And there were even some travel firms in the UK that had to close that year and they cited the volcano as a reason for this. So that's how risk management could have affected the volcanic ash cloud in Europe. Or the... That word. Remember to like and subscribe. Next time we're going to take a look at a royal wedding. Which one will it be?